so welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about a really important topic, which is how to avoid the pitfalls of buying Bulgarian properties. So make sure you stick around to see the final one because we're going to go through six mistakes that foreigners always make when they're buying Bulgarian properties. Let's dive in. Number six is lack of research. It may be tempting to buy the first house you see online given the attractive prices. You should always look at the reviews for trustworthy agents who won't take your money and run for the hills. We can recommend ideal homes and also Bulgarian property experts. Take a look at which areas are the most popular, look at the weather conditions and where the local shops are, otherwise you may be finding yourself driving a lot. So it's really important that you not only speak to people who might live in the area that you want to buy in, but also have a look around and see what other houses there are that maybe your agent isn't selling just to see what the area really looks like and what other people are selling their properties for. People make the mistake of not knowing how they're going to pay their bills. And I, I know it sounds like a weird one, but we've heard about quite a few people that they get here, they run out of money and then they don't know how they're going to earn any money. They just, I guess they cross their fingers and hope that yeah, it's not easy for foreigners to make money in this country, so it's worth making sure that you have something lined up already if you're going to work out here. I know lots of people are retired, so that's not a problem, but if you're going to work, make sure you have something lined up or that you speak Bulgarian. <laughs> so the second one is not being familiar with the laws here, and it's really important that you have somebody who can take care of the legal side of things for you. This is our deeds here. And as you can see, it's all in Bulgarian. So not only do you need somebody you can trust, but somebody who speaks Bulgarian to navigate that side of things for you. Another thing that people aren't prepared for is you can come here, you can open a, com a company and buy a property, no problem, quite easy. But unless you're retired, getting, actually moving here and becoming a resident is hard. It's difficult. There are there are methods of doing it, but again, you need to speak to someone that knows the language and the local laws, so that you know that you can move here and you can work, earn money, and get your residency card. So it's really important that you plan on if you're going to stay here long term, how you're going to get a visa to do that, because otherwise, it's going to be illegal. <laughs> Number three, underestimating the costs of buying a property. Bulgaria. <laughs> so it's really important that you remember that it's not about just buying the property and having the money for the property but also that your house is probably going to look like a jungle and if you're not here to deal with it you're going to have to pay somebody to cut down all of the mess to keep it from being a danger to the property. Uh, something we didn't do any research on was material costs and they're not they're still they're basically level with England. They're sometimes cheaper, sometimes more expensive. Sometimes it may be good, sometimes it may be shit. We thought the property, the material costs were going to be a lot cheaper here uh, because a few years, maybe three years ago, they were a lot cheaper and since Brexit and everything. Yeah, it might seem like at the time, you know, we bought ours for £7,000, but then you have to think about how much are you going to spend on renovation? We're going to do a lot of the stuff ourselves because Anthony's capable of doing that. But if you're not capable of doing all your own work, you're going to have to pay somebody to do it to the standard that you like. So it's really important that you factor in all of those costs along with taxes, paying somebody, paying the notary, paying the estate agent. Make sure you ask about all of the fees and make sure that your agent is transparent with you about what it's all going to cost. Because luckily the fees aren't actually that much. But you don't want to be caught short not knowing that you've got to pay a fee and then be like, oh, I don't, you know, you have to factor everything in before deciding what house you're going to buy. Because the house we bought was only 7,000, so all of the taxes and costs were low. Whereas if you buy something that's 100,000 euros or something like that, everything else is going to be more expensive. An insider tip is please be careful of British agents. We know some great British agents that will help you and will do everything for you for the right price. But be careful of British agents who think it's easy to get extra money out of you because you won't realise how cheap things really are here. So I actually bumped into someone that bought 10 years ago and because they were British, they paid 10,000 euros more than they should have, even back then when properties were a lot cheaper. Yeah, so do plenty of your research and make sure that you're not gonna get scammed by somebody. 
We've seen a lot of people who've bought their properties without coming here to view it in person and getting really nasty surprises when they get here, like the roof's fallen through or I don't know, lots and lots of things seem to happen. So it's a good idea, first of all, to visit in person because you don't know if you're going to like it here or not and you, you want to do a little bit of research to have a look around which area feels right for you to buy. I know that we bought this property because we knew it was close to supermarkets, schools, kindergarten, playgrounds, but we're far enough away that we have our own privacy. So make sure that you do your, your research and plan a visit here because it's really important that you see your property before you buy it and you check that it is all sound, the building is sound. Anthony's dad is a builder, so he came with us to view the property to make sure that it was safe to live in and that it wasn't gonna crumble into a big dusty mess. There are tons of really helpful Facebook groups that are filled with expats who really actually live here, who've experienced everything and who you can ask questions to. If you want to, you can send us a message on Instagram. Here is our link to our socials. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask us. Okay, so the next, so the next mistake that foreigners make when buying property in Bulgaria is to not think about the future Think about resale, value of your property, and also whether or not you're going to want to move somewhere else or whether your lifestyle is going to change. I think we bought our property knowing that we want to do it up. We want to live here. We can both drive so we can we have access to everything. Whereas, you know, there are some people that buy and then they realise they can't get about because they haven't got a driving licence or because there's just nothing near that house because they've found the house, it looks beautiful, but that's it, that's where it ends. They don't think about actually living there and getting you shopping and you know taking your car to a mechanic. And if you have children, you might wanna make sure that there is somewhere they can play in the village, if there's other families that you can connect with and where the nearest kindergarten is, the schools, universities, things like that for them in the future. So we're really lucky here because we're right in the middle of loads of different towns and villages and we're only 45 to 50 minutes away from the big cities. So we're in a prime location and we think that it would be quite easy to resell this property uh, to somebody else if we did want to in the future, so. So the final thing is cultural differences. So Bulgaria is very different to England, which is why you should always visit before you come and buy a property out here to make sure that you're comfortable with the way that life is lived out here and you are familiar with the culture and the language and that you can show respect to the people when you actually come and live here. We've been learning the language for about a year and a little bit before we came here. We've only been here for three months and already our conversation skills are building relationships between our neighbours and us and also people in the shops and things like that. So you must, you must do some research into what the culture is like here and whether or not you can tolerate it and whether it's something that you'll like when you live here. All right guys, so that concludes our rundown of the six mistakes that foreigners make when buying property in Bulgaria. Don't forget to follow us on our social media channels. We'll put them down here so that you can see where to follow us. So don't forget, if you want to see us absolutely butchering these videos, <laughs> go on to Patreon and you will also see how our kids torment us every time we try and make a video. What do you mean they already see that? In these videos. <laughs> so don't forget if you have any questions then please do join our Patreon where you can access our chat community and also directly message us about anything that you want. So that's all for today and we will see you on our next video. Ciao ciao!